<clears throat> okay, let's start, Frank. Let me introduce you. Frank is a software engineer with over 15 years of software development and has experience working with both the medical and financial industry. Frank, you has been work has been working with Finrac since 2017, implementing it for various clients and has worked with pretty much all of the code base. Frank is a feeder lead developer and today is going to present how to expand Finrac capabilities in a practical example. So the floor is yours, Frank. And I will leave here. All right. Thank you, Javier. Um, I'll just share my screen. Um, Just let me know if you can see my screen. Hello? Um, yes, you can, Frank. So go ahead. We, all right. We could see your screen. Okay, fine. So I'll just proceed. Um, I, I can't really uh, uh, access that screen again, so I, I can't be able to see if there are any chats. But uh, in case you have anything to say, just uh, speak up and then I'll respond. So basically, I'm going to be talking about um, <clears throat> Fineract, uh, expanding Fineract capabilities. Uh, and this is based on a practical example. Um, so this is just a brief agenda of uh, uh, my presentation. Um, it's going to be highly technical because, yes, I'm a software engineer and uh, uh, most of what I'm going to be talking about is based on my experience um, working with the Finrap code base and you know trying to uh, tweak it to to work for a specific client. So um, Javier has mentioned a brief about me, and um, so I'll go ahead and talk about uh, the client, and then also talk about challenges that we faced with our Finrap implementation, how we've addressed those challenges. And then um, I'll basically share a few recommendations on what we can do as a community to uh, improve Finneract going forward. Um, and then we'll have a session for Q&A at the end. Uh, but uh, again, if you have any questions along the way, you don't have to wait till the end. Feel free to just uh, shoot them as we move along. So about me, this uh, has been um, mentioned. I've been working with Finerac for about four years, since 2017. And over those four years, um, um, I've worked with uh, over 20 different clients implementing Finerac. And these clients uh, are spread in different countries in about four or five continents because we've worked with clients in uh, Africa, Latin America, North America, Asia, Europe. And um, my experience working with these clients has given me a good understanding of uh, the financial industry. Um, but for this talk, um, we'll focus the lessons learned from uh, our experience with one of the clients. So a brief history of this client, we'll call this client ABC. Um, so ABC, we started working with ABC in uh, mid 2019. 
And um, at that time, ABC had been using a core, a traditional core banking application, which is basically closed. It didn't have a, an open API, but uh, ABC needed to grow. And for them to grow, they needed to be able to uh, expose their banking services for integration with other services. So when they looked around, the solution that they came up with was Fineract. And at the time, uh, we deployed for them Fineract 1.3. Um, and also it's important to note that uh, by mid 2019, when we started working with them, it was their second attempt at implementing Fineract because they had tried it before, but uh, for some reason, um, they didn't manage to get it over the line. So when we started working with them, they had about 11,000 clients and um, about 12,000 savings accounts. So this particular client, ABC, they offer more of saving accounts and um, fixed deposit accounts and less of the loan accounts. So the focus will be mainly on the savings part of things. Um, so by mid 2020, that was after about a year, um, this client had grown to uh, about 240,000 clients and uh, 260 savings accounts. Um, yeah, so from about 12,000 savings account to 260 savings accounts in, in, on, in just 12 months, that was a significant growth. And uh, in that period, ABC had basically rolled, rolled out a mobile application and had also rolled out wallet services. And these were using Fineract as the core banking back end. So with these volumes, Fineract started to fill it. And um, as we speak today, um, ABC has over 430,000 clients with uh, 500,000 savings accounts. Um, things are pretty stable right now, but it's not always been the case. Along the way, we've, uh, we've uh, faced a number of challenges that I'll be going into shortly. So again, today, the, uh, the traffic that is hitting Fineract for ABC is about 40 to 100 transactions per minute. This is still on the lower side, considering uh, the potential that they have to grow. So we are, we are not resting on our laurels. We are trying to think of ways to be, be more prepared for the growth that this uh, company is, 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 is uh, expecting. Yeah, so, um, so that growth started asking a number of questions of Fineract, because when we grew from uh, 12,000 accounts to about um, 260, that's when we started feeling uh, the load on Fineract. And um, one of the things that started happening is that uh, we started having a number of uh, database connection timeouts. And these were due to the increasing number of concurrent connections. So we had a number of clients using the mobile app doing uh, various transactions. And these transactions were hitting Fineract concurrently. So, yeah, we started experiencing uh, connection timeouts. And also, we also started having frequent out of memory errors that were causing the server to just shut down. And that wasn't a good thing because um, each time there would be a downtime, basically business would, would be at a halt because Fineract is at the core of the uh, of the ecosystem of this client of ours, ABC. Um, 
Another challenge that we met was slow transaction processing due to the concurrent transactions and the database connections timing out, transactions slowed down and a number of transactions started failing. Um, some of the jobs were taking hours to complete, uh, especially the interest posting job. Also, the Pentaho reports started taking long to complete because uh, of the increased amount of data. And uh, those who have worked with Pentaho reports, you've seen the queries in those reports. They are quite complex and involving. They have they involve a number of tables. So there's so many joins in there. And that, I mean, takes quite a while for, for them to execute and complete when the, uh, the data has grown so, so big. And uh, yeah, generally report processing started slowing down other transactions. So what that means that when they would be spooling reports, say they want uh, an end of month GL report or balance sheet or whatever it is, at the time when they are running that report, other transactions would slow down and then uh, other parts of the system would start suffering. So these are uh, the major challenges that we faced um, with the with this client. So how we address these challenges? Um, so I'll just give a background. Um, when we deployed Fineract, we basically deployed the vanilla Fineract with the um, the Drizzle JDBC connector and basically Fineract out of the box. And because at the start they had only 11,000 clients and the load was, was quite minimal, we didn't suffer. So when we started face facing these challenges, these are questions that we started raising. What, um, what can we change? What can we improve to address you know these challenges so for the database connection timeouts we decided to change uh, the jdbc driver from drizzle to mysql connector and uh, mysql connector has a better performance and we instantly felt it but uh, the major change that we made that really really stabilized the database connections was to switch from uh, Apache Tomcat connection pool to Hikari connection pool. So we made that switch and then tweaked it a little bit to basically uh, get the best performance out of it. And that um, basically addressed the connection timeouts. So I think the, the advantage with Hikari is that um, it's able to maintain a number of connection pools in memory and subsequent connections will be faster. And uh, that is what really helped. The other, the other issue was the out of memory errors. Now the reason for the out of memory errors was, uh, first of all, as we, we note from the first, the first solution that we applied, um, was basically the memory management of the JDK that we're using wasn't the best. So we're using Adopt Open JDK 8, and uh, we, we switched this to Azure Open JDK. And Azure Open JDK basically has a much, much better memory management. And uh, the moment we uh, deployed the Azure Open JDK, we, we got some instant stability. We stopped getting out of memory errors. And um, yeah, the, the server stopped just shutting down. Um, yeah, but on top of that, we also, we also tweaked the memory allocation for the JVM. This we did alongside um, switching to Azure and um, that gave us some some stability, and I mean, we we implemented this about a year ago, and um, 
till now we've had relative stability. The out of memory errors haven't surfaced. Um, another thing that we did, we disabled logging. So I say that we, when we deployed uh, Apache Fineract, we basically um, just deployed the vanilla version. So some of the improvements that we made was to disable uh, logging of slow queries. And this, uh, this, this helped in two things. It helped that the logs stopped growing as fast as they were, because with slow queries being logged, uh, those log files kept growing so fast and they were eating up the storage and we needed to regularly clean up those files. So we raised the, uh, the database logging level to only log errors and not log slow queries. So that, that also helped in addressing the out of memory errors. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and also the, the, the database logging of slow queries and uh, monitoring was also adding a performance overhead to and was generally slowing down uh, Finera. So disabling that proved to to at least give us some some leg room, you know, to to address uh, other issues without uh, these slowing us down. Um, yeah, I think that. That is what we did for the memory errors. Um, another thing that uh, we really, really uh, battled with was uh, slow transaction processing. And the slow transaction processing happened for two major reasons. The first reason uh, was that um, the issues before, the database connection issues that I mentioned before, the out of memory errors that I mentioned before, they both contributed to the slow transaction processing. But another thing that contributed to the slow transaction processing is that Fineract um, out of the box supports backdating of transactions. So that means that each time a transaction is posted, um, balances are recalculated. We have to go through the entire list of transactions of an account recalculate the running balances of each of the tr transactions and that that takes a lot of processing power and imagine imagine having this um, um having that overhead and also having like um so many transactions hitting the server concurrently so you have so many transactions hitting the server and each transaction um, is basically causing a recalculation of running balances for each transaction on the account. So that just caused a slowdown. And um, to address that, we basically had to go into the code and do some optimization. So the first thing that we did, uh, luckily enough, ABC um, did not support backdating of transactions. That was something that they made very clear and said we do not support backdating of transactions. So that was uh, uh, a good thing for us. So when we disabled backdating of transactions, we basically just um, uh, took the most recent transaction as the gospel truth. So the balances that are specified on the most recent transaction were taken as the gospel truth and we used those to basically update balances on the account itself so we didn't need to go through the entire list of transactions and recalculate and do all this so that sped up transactions deposits withdraws interest postings charges all those were instantly sped up with that change and then we also modified um, some of the transaction processing code to avoid loading the entire set of transactions into memory. So if you've worked with uh, uh, Hibernate, OpenJPA, you'll know that when you load um, an object into memory and you uh, try to uh, 
access some of the other fields, the related fields are then loaded into memory. So if an account had, say, 100,000 transactions, and you want to basically add a new transaction, a withdrawal or a deposit, it would load the entire list of 100,000 transactions into memory. And loading that list took some time because those transactions had to be ordered. And uh, of course, loading all that list into the memory also took up uh, space in memory. So this caused uh, the, the processing to slow down even much fast, much, much quicker. So what we did was to modify uh, some pieces of that code to just basically avoid that scenario. And, uh, uh, and that sped up the tra transaction processing. So an example is um, we had a, an account that it took about almost uh, 30 seconds to a minute just to post a deposit or withdraw. And the reason for that was that the account had about 170,000 transactions. So loading the entire list of those transactions into memory and processing it, that took about 30 seconds just for a deposit. And sometimes it took even a minute. So when we made that code change, um, the processing time for that transaction was significantly cut down to less than a second. Posting of a transaction was about 400, 300, 400 milliseconds. That uh, basically improved the process. So, and most of these changes, we were really conversant of the fact that we should, we wouldn't break anything as far as the business logic is concerned. So we had to uh, basically um, add some tests to verify that um, the balances remain intact after each transaction is posted. The other thing that we did to um, address the issue of slow transaction processing was to um, basically decouple um, Fineract into three instances. So initially we had just one instance of Fineract handling all transactions, report processing and um, and, and uh, scheduling jobs. So when we, uh, when the volume of this client really grew, that didn't be, that, that wasn't sustainable. So we decided to basically um, decouple Fineract into three different instances. We had a REST instance that basically handles all transaction processing and other back office tasks. And then we had a report instance for all reporting tasks, and then um, a jobs instance to run all scheduled jobs. And that uh, that seemed to help us so, so much. And it's an architecture that we use even to this day. So basically this is, uh, this is what it looks like. So Fineract 1 uh, basically handles everything uh, all transactions, onboarding of clients, um, you know. Uh, and then um, Fineract 2 only runs reports. So we basically redirected traffic to the specific um, uh, instance of Fineract that it needs to go to. So if there's a any report request, it's redirected to um, the reports instance. Then all other calls go to the REST instance, which is Fineract 1. And then Fineract 3, we made it inaccessible to <clears throat> all other microservices and other services that were talking to Fineract. We just made it a standalone somewhere without uh, access from these other you know, services. 
And uh, what Funeral Act 3 basically does, it runs the, the jobs that have been scheduled. And you'll notice that for Funeral Act 1 and 2, the jobs were disabled. So to achieve that, we basically um, implemented some, um, we added some environment variables that we used to check and see if, if, uh, if job processing is enabled, then when uh, the time uh, for the scheduled job hits, then the job runs. If at all it's not enabled, then um, the job is not executed. So it's basically the same version of Finerac running on all three instances, but uh, basing on the different environment variables, uh, we, we, we take the appropriate action, whether to run a job or not. And all three instances um, were talking to the same, the same database. And that has proved to be stable again. We've been running that uh, architecture for about one year now, and things are pretty stable. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, another challenge that we faced was jobs taking long, taking hours to complete. And the reason for this is again, the number of accounts had increased and uh, basically processing uh, say an interest posting job which would normally take minutes grew to about I mean seven hours eight hours in some instances and that that is because everything was happening on one instance and also the amount of um, the amount of uh, data that had been accumulated over time. So what we did with the to to, in addition to the new architecture that we implemented to have the jobs running on a specific server, we went ahead to to um, to split the interest posting job into uh, a multi a multi threaded job, and we made it configurable that we can uh, basically configure how many threads should run the interest posting job. And uh, also we, we, we threw some more resources to the server to be able to speed this up. And uh, that reduced the time for processing the interest posting job to under three hours. Um, yeah. And then for the Pentaho reports, um, taking long to to complete. This again was uh, basically due to the amount of data and the complex queries. So what we did for, for this is we implemented a feature to generate some of the huge reports uh, asynchronously behind the scenes. So basically what happens is that um, when a report is triggered, it will run behind the scenes and then at the end, when the report is ready, it will be pushed to um, S3 bucket in Excel format, zipped, and then we'll send out uh, an email notification to, to the user who requested the report with a link for them to download the report. And uh, we also manage this in such a way that we don't have so many processes executing complex queries because that would uh, slow down the database. So the, the reports are handled in some kind of queue that each request is queued up and uh, processed one after another. Um, yeah, and uh, for, the, for some of the reports, I think like the GL report, which, which uh, lists uh, journal entries, some of those reports had lots of data there's a month where uh, one of the reports had over a million records, and that was basically more than the limit for Excel, for, for the number of rows in an Excel sheet. I'm talking about Excel version 2007, 2003, 2007, which is about 1 million records limit. So there's a time that that uh, for that month, the records exceeded that limit and they were not able to generate reports. So we, we, we changed this to 
basically split the reports into multiple files um, so that when once the limit is hit the rest of the data is uh, pushed to a different file and that uh, that has proved to work at least for for the time that we've we've had it running it's been pretty stable um yeah so that's it for for the challenges and how we we addressed them um so concerning the recommendations that we would like to make uh, based on our experience i think um most of the improvements that we've made again this was made on finerapt version 1.3 so some of the improve improvements that we have made we we have noted that are already part of the latest version of finerapt that's 1.5 and i think from 1.4 um finerapt started supporting hikari connection pool um and also a number of uh, library upgrades also I, I didn't mention this but we upgraded some of the libraries that finerapt uh, 1.3 was based on to help improve so those upgrades also have, have been we can know that they have been uh, already uh, released as part of the latest version of finerapt and um yeah, the other recommendation is uh, um, we should consider decoupling Finiract into modules or microservices. Um, we know Finiract CN is still in the works and yet to be released, but we believe that's the future. But as we wait for Finiract CN, we might want to. Uh, I know there's some work going into modularizing Finiract, which I, I highly support because. For the cases whereby um, you have so many requests that basically are hitting a specific uh, module of Finiract, you don't need the entire Finiract on that instance. You can just have a microservice that uh, basically implements that module. So this is something that we we believe will will, will uh, go a long way in making Finiract more capable of handling even much much uh, a larger load than the current load that we've experienced with our client um, for bulk imports we should be able to support excel uh, 2003 to 2007 version that is xlsx format um, because the current version that is supported is xls format has a limit of i think 60 thousands 65,000 rows so um in case there's a, a template that has like in our case here had they have over 400,000 clients right now so if you need a template that is going to have all those then it will have to be in excel sx format um yeah another recommendation is we we should consider redesigning some of the database tables one of them is the channel entries table so right now this table has uh, two rows for each transaction one row for a credit and one for a debit i think we should look into making that one row because most of these rows basically have the same data and the only difference is the accounts that are being affected keeping that as one record would reduce would basically um have the number of records in that table for right now for our client that table has about 70 million records so this alone would uh, reduce the number of records in that table to about 35 million and that also speeds up the queries and um, yeah some other recommendations again on the code base is to move the business logic out of the domain classes and just keep them light and um, yeah, there are a number of uh, other recommendations, but th this is what I can, you know, present in, in the time uh, stipulated right now. But for a start, these are some of the recommendations. Um, 
There is a question from the audience, Frank. And that's it. She, yeah. Is yes, there a please. way to easily configure replica database for complex or long running queries? Yes, um, there is a way. So um, Amazon supports this. Amazon RDS Aurora supports uh, replica databases. So that's also one thing that uh, we have considered. And uh, it, it's yes, it's it's very possible. And, and also Fineract uh, provides um, out of the box, the Fineract tenant connection table, I think, in the database provides uh, a provision for you to specify uh, different connection uh, credentials for a reporting database. So you can actually um, spool the reports from a separate database, a replica database in this case. Any other questions? I'm trying to find this. All right. Um, I, I don't know I if think there's there no more questions. Questions. Otherwise, if there are no more questions, then uh, I think that's it for my talk. Thank you guys for for listening. Thank you, Frank. And we have our next session in 10 minutes, uh, bridging the chance between analog and 21st century digital banking. Um, so see you there. Thank you, Frank, again. All right. Thank you all. Bye. See you in 10 minutes.